أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم With the grace of Almighty Allah we have covered the basics of مرکب توصیفی جملہ اسمیہ and following that مرکب جاری مرکب جاری is a combination of حرف جار and اسم مجرور So we have حرف جار and then we have ism following that which is always in state of jar so whenever we have haraf jar we will have ism majroor and that's our slogan haraf jar ism majroor haraf jar ism majroor and this jar and majroor combine to make مرکب جاری مرکب جاری so that's our prepositional phrase that's the English equivalent prepositional phrase here I have some examples from Quran of um, مرکب جاری because our focus is Quran and it's important to bring some examples from Quran ان انتم الا فی دلال کبیر that is Surah Mulk آیہ نمبر 9 part of آیہ نمبر 9 ان انتم الا فی دلال کبیر you are not except in gross error so one of the translations is you are merely in gross error a major error a major mistake so here we have harif uh, jar which is fee translated as in here and the la lin is our ism majroor so whenever we have harif jar we will have ism majroor and what is kabir in here then this is our majroor following jar and what is kabir in let's analyze that فی ذلال کبیر فی ذلال کبیر پتہ ہے فی ذلال کبیر سو فی اس آر حرف جار حرف جار and our اسم مجرور is دلالن so حرف جار is our agent which is عامل عامل and it is acting on the next noun which is دلالن in this case دلالن 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 so this is then another term is called معمول عامل is the one who acts and ma'mool is the one on which action takes place so in this example here the ma'mool is dalalin not kabirin the action of fi is taking place on dalal not kabir so what is this then if we look at it carefully this is mosuf and this is the sifa so harak jar is here before this mausuf so it is acting on this mausuf in this construction and forcing this to take the state of jar so whenever we have harak jar is some following that will be majroor and why is kabir Majroor Kabir is because Kabir is a Sifa of Dalal. So Sifa has to follow Masuf in all four aspects of a noun. So here Masuf is in Jar, Kabir will be in Jar. Uh, Masuf is singular, Kabir is singular. It's Muzakka, that is Muzakka. This is indefinite, that is indefinite. So this Masuf and Sifa then combine to make مرکب توصیفی 
which is our, in other words, com combination, in combination it is ism majroor from the analysis point of view. So ism majroor and haraf jar, this is haraf jar, so Haraf Jar and Isam Majur are now going to combine to make Murakkab Jari. Murakkab Jari. So in a way, this whole construction in our analysis is kind of Isam Majur. But literally speaking, um, Isam Majur here is Masuf, which is Dalal. Fi does not have any effect on Kabir. Kabir is just following Mosuf in all four aspects of that Mosuf. So that is our whole of that is our Murakkab Jari. And in this example, it makes a component of this ayah which we cannot go into at this stage. Inshallah, one day we will analyze the ayah fully. So in Antum Illa Fi Dalalin Kabirin Surah Mulk, our next ayah is Wa Inna Ka La Ala Khulukin Azimin, Khulukin Azimin. So that's Surah Kalam, ayah number four of Surah Kalam. You are of the highest noble character. That's one of the translations. And as we said last time, وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمُ اللَّهُ تَعْلَمُونَ azim. So that lam here which takes fatha, which takes fatha, yes, it is a um, particle of emphasis just like inna. So actually this is uh, Allah, like that, Allah. And then we have Hulukin Azimin. Hulukin Azimin. So Lam has been added here. It doesn't have any effect on Arab. So Lam will be added just acting like Inna, giving double emphasis here. La'ala khulukin azimin. So here we have our harf jar, ala, uh, on or upon, the meaning of that. And then khulukin azimin is murakkab tawsifi. And effect of ala is on khuluk, not on azim. Azim is just following khuluk. This is masuf, that is sifa. Masuf and Sifa combine to make Murakkab Tawsifi, which then becomes Isam Majur. Allah is our harf jar just like in the previous example. And then Jar and Majur combine to make Murakkab Jari. Hatta Ada Kal Urujunil Kadim. It is uh, Surah Yasin. And in that, um, the full ayah is Wal Kamaru Kadzal Nahu Manazila Hatta Ada Kal Urujunil Kadim. As for the moon, we have designed phases for it till it again becomes like an old dried curved date stock. So that's one of the translations. And um, Hatta is um, kind of end point here, but Hatta is followed by verb here rather than noun. So, so we'll leave, we will leave that. We're not going to address that today. Harf jar here is Kaf Zabar Ka. That is Harf, harf Jar here. Kaf Zabar Ka. It's one of the, which means like. Like Ka. Kaas Fimma Kul, again Ka is um, Harif Jar in that ayah. So that we have Kaf and then Al Urjun. Al Urjun. 
and because of cough cough has a kind of combined in combination it will be written like this this hamza of al has merged here with cough so kal urjuni so this is the definite term construction urjunil kadimi so again mausuf and sifa and in this example example mausuf is definite sifa is definite the mausuf is in jar because of harf jar which is ka like meaning of like Um, and uh, so this is um, definite, this is definite. So it's masuf, sifa, definite, definite, singular, singular. Okay, in jar, in jar. And it's muzakkar, it's muzakkar. So similarly, just like that here, in these two examples, harif jar, ism majroor, then this is masuf, sifa, masuf, sifa combine to become then finally uh, ism majroor. And half a jar and is some would combine to make Murakab Jari in this example. Right. Uh, our last example here is Wa Ayatahum Anna Hamalna Zuri Yatahum Fil Fulkil Mashun. Again is Surah Yasin, ayah number 41. Um, uh, another sign for them is how we carried their race or progeny through the flood. There is nothing here to suggest through the flood, but this suggests fulfill Kail Mashahun that there was flooding. Uh, in the Latin Ark, uh, Latin Ark and similar vessels. That's one of the translations. So the point here is that we have got again Haref Jar here and Al Fulk is Majrur. And then it's sifa is following it and has is definite and is in state of jar as well. So masuf and sifa combine to become then ism majroor and harf uh, jar and this marakkab tosifi which is our ism majroor combine to make make marakkab jari. So these four simple example examples, there's nothing really complicated here. We have to move on. So inshallah, we are going to do our Bismillah today as well, uh, towards the end of it. Um, so we started with Murakkab Tawsifi. Uh, we then went to Jumla Ismiya. And then uh, we looked at uh, Murakkab Jari. And we looked at a specific example, and our example is our example which we have been using up till now, which has helped us quite a lot. Is we started with, for example, uh, we said a good boy, a good. Why we translated that as Waladun so indefinite construction Waladun Hassanun a good boy. Then we said the good boy. The good boy. And the good boy we translated Al Waladu Al Waladul. Hasanu. Indefinite, indefinite, definite, definite. And then we wanted to say um, the boy is good, making a jumla sentence. The boy is good. And our jumla was Al Waladu. Al Waladu. Hassanun. So this has now become our uh, Muqtada and Khabar. Here this was Murakkab Tawsifi, Mausuf, Sifa. And here this has become Muqtada and this has become Khabar which is giving the meaning of is 
between them here. So instead of um, going from definite to indefinite, that kind of gives us um, is MR here at that particular point. So that was our Joomla. And then we said the boy is in the mosque. The boy is in the mosque. And our translation was Al Waladu Al Waladu Fil Masjidi. So we brought this Murakbejari uh, here, which replaced the Khabar and it became Khabar, uh, as you remember. Fil Masjidi. So we can also say al waladu fil bayti the boy is in the house al waladu fil sayyarati the boy is in the car um, etc um, so the boy is in the mosque we have done up till now now we want to say the boy's book we're going to move on and now we want to say the boy's book the book of the boy we can say The book of the boy, better way of saying in English is boy's book with apostrophe. So, boy's book, and how we are going to say that in um, Arabic, and the boy's book, the book of the boy. Um, we have our vocabulary here again, uh, it's not difficult. Uh, we have uh, book, kitabun. Kitab, and we have boy because here it's definite, so we can say al kitabu, and we have al waladu. That's our vocabulary al kitabu al waladu. So there is clearly a link between these two nouns. We've got these two nouns, and there is a link in the between these two nouns which is that of possession. So one of them is possessor. The possessor here is uh, the boy. Al-Waladu is possessor. P -O -S. Okay, possessor. And we can call this possessed or possessy. Possessed or possessy. We can say that. So there's a link between these two and the link is that of ownership you can call this owner and this is something which is owned owned owner and owned and that's the kind of link which we have between these two nouns so what we are doing is we are adding one noun to another noun or we can say attributing one noun to another noun because the, this kind of link between these two nouns is not always that of ownership we will see that later um, but most of the time there will be concept of ownership so one noun is owned by an other noun so what we are really doing is that we are adding one noun to another noun and that addition we we'll call that addition the action of adding Addition in Arabic is called idafa. Idafa. So from idafa, then uh, we can have two more terms. Um, one is mudaf, and the other is mudaf ila. So from this addition, which is idafa, we have mudaf and mudaf ila. And mudaf is what is owned, or what is possessed, or possessi. So this is something which is owned, and mudaf ila is the owner. Or this is possessor, this is possessi. 
So when we say the book of the boy, then the book is being added to the noun boy and there is a connection or link of possession or ownership between these three nouns. Um, so how, how we then have this construction? The construction clearly will be mudaf and mudaf ila will combine to make murakkab adafi. Murakkab, that becomes murakkab, compilation, adafi. So how do we construct murakkab adafi in, in Arabic? So our topic is murakkab adafi. Today's topic. Murakkab adafi. Let's have a look at it. Murakkab adafi. So that's our uh, um, new construction. So we have murakkab tasifi, murakkab jari, and today we have murakkab adafi which is a compilation of mudaf and mudaf are put together. Um, so what we have to really do here is to focus on a few points which are really, really important. Um, our vocabulary is, is, is not a problem, we have a kitab. <laughs> And we have Walad. Okay. So how are we going to put these together in Arabic to give that concept of Murakkab Adafi uh, or possessive phrase? You can say this possessive phrase in English. Possessive phrase. So we are going to make possessive phrase from these two nouns and we will have to put them together in a special construction. So there are two rules which govern mudaf. Basically this is kitabun and this is waladun. If we say indefinite, if we say definite then it will be al kitabu, that will be al waladu. So what happens that mudaf, mudaf has got two important qualities, characters or attributes and one of them is that mudaf never takes the mean. That's right, yeah, this way. So mudaf never takes the mean. That's the first true, first principle of a known being mudaf. Mudaf will never have the mean. And the second rule is that mudaf is, let's write down mudaf here. Mudaf will never take all of definiteness. Never takes all of definiteness. So this kitab, it could be kitabu, kitaba, or kitabi, but in this construction it cannot be kitabun, kitaban, kitabin, or al kitabu, al kitaba, al kitabi. That's what this means. And there's only one rule which governs uh, um, mudafila, and mudafila is always in state of jar. Mudafila always in state of the, that's the only condition for mudafila, always in state of jar. So we have murakkab um, Firafi here which is um, mudaf and mudafila, mudaf and this is mudafila so kitab is mudaf, walad is mudafila. Mudaf is not going to take the mean and it is not going to take al either. And walad which is mudafila will always be in state of jar. So these are the important principles which govern 
the wheel of mudaf and mudafala being together in put in possessive phrase so let's go back to our um, construction here so we said um, mudaf is not going to take the mean so that will remain kitab it will become kitabu kitabu and this will become al waladi al waladi kitabul waladi the boy's book the book of the boy mudaf mudafila let's write on again to consolidate it mudaf mudafila So just like English, when we say um, the book of the boy, the book comes first, and here again mudaf comes first. So kitab al waladi, kitabul waladi, kitabul waladi, the boy's book or the book of the boy. Um, so looking here. Um, just revising it, kitab is not going to take the mean and it's not going to take al either. And mudafila will always be in state of jar. So it can't be al waladu, al walada, it will always be al waladi. So we cannot say kitabul walada or kitabul waladu. The correct way of saying it, kitabul waladi. The boys the book, the book of the boy. And so simple rules uh, only have to remember them and keep them in mind. And whenever we see um, two nouns together and the second of them is in a state of jar, we will have to think of Murakkab Izafi and we will look at Mudab Murah will not have the mean and will not have al either. So that will confirm to us that this is Murakkab Rafi. It is not Murakkab Tosifi, for example. So this is definitely Murakkab Rafi. So how do we address those four states of a noun in Murakkab Rafi? Uh, we know that a noun has got four attributes, four qualities which is Arab, definiteness, wins and other. So one issue we have already addressed here that from the Arab point of view, Arab, Mudaf can take any Arab depending on its position in the sentence. It could be Kitabu, it could be Kitaba, it, it could be Kitabi. So it can take any position any Arab, depending on its position. So any Arab, there will be any Arab. And Walad, it will always be Majroor. So Mudaf will take any Arab depending on its position in the sentence and Mudaf will always be Majroor. So that's one aspect covered. And then the other aspect is Wus'a, the definiteness. From the definiteness point of view, if Mudaf ila is definite, for example, in this example, kitabul waladi, the boy is definite here. So, if the mudaf ila is definite, mudaf will be considered to be definite because mudaf is not going to take al anyway. And how do we know it's definite or indefinite? And the, the way to know whether it's definite or indefinite is to look at mudafila. If mudafila is definite, mudaf will be definite. And most of the time, mudafila will be used as definite in this construction. Sometimes it's used indefinite. So if mudafila is indefinite, mudaf will be indefinite. And if mudafila is definite, mudaf will be considered to be definite. So that are wus are covered.
Um, and the next one is, for example, genes. So they do not have to tally. Mudaf and Mudafala, they don't have to tally. They may or they may not. It's not like Murakab Tasifi that um, Sifa has to follow Nusuf in all four aspects. Um, Kitabul Waladi, um, the boy's book, and it could be Kitabul Binti, girl's book. Kitabul Binti. So here Kitab is Mazakrib, Bint is Monmas. So they do not have to tally. Here they tally here, coincidence, here they don't. So they do not have to tally, follow one another in, in genes. From the other point of view, again, they do not have to tally here. We say Kitabul Waladi, this is singular, this is singular, but boy can own the whole library. So it doesn't have to be, Mudaf doesn't have to be singular, for example. So they, they do not have to tally. So we have covered these four aspects of a noun and how they apply to Mudaf and Mudafala in Murakkab Etafi. Um, as you remember, in one of the videos, we looked at types of definite nouns, and we counted up to five. Today, we can go up to six. So, types of definite nouns. definite nouns. So the first one we said was isme alam is always definite. Isme alam, which is proper noun. Then isme zameer is definite. And that's a um, personal pronoun. Personal pronoun. Then we have ism ishara is also definite. That is a demonstrative pronoun. Demonstrative pronoun. Then we have ism mosul, which is a relative pronoun. Is a mosul and the English equivalent will be relative pronoun. We're going to study these in detail later on. Pronoun. Okay, is a mosul. And then we said Mu'arrah bin Lam. Mu'arraf bil lam, made definite by addition of lam, which is al, part of al. So that, those are our um, five different categories, and we can add number six today, and the six will be mudaf il al marifa, which we just mentioned, mudaf il al marifa. So any mudaf which is attributed to definite mudafila, that mudaf will be considered to be definite. So mudaf il al marifa. Thus, six categories, and there's a seventh one, total of seven, and we're going to come across um, the seventh one soon, inshallah. So this is our, uh, our um, list of definite um, nouns. This is just a revision from last time with the addition of Mudaf il al Marifa. We didn't do anything new here. Let us look at um, 
Some more examples of Marakkab Araf. Iraqi, before we go on to do our Bismillah. So we're going to do our Bismillah today, inshallah. Um, we can say the house of Allah. Baitullahi. Mudaf, Mudafala. Mudafala is Majreer. We can say Allah's Messenger, Rasulullah. Rasulullah. So, Mudaf, you can see it doesn't take the mean, it doesn't take um, line of definiteness either. So, the book of Allah or Allah's book. The book of Allah. And that will be Kitabullah here. Kitabullah here. Um, Allah's help. which we always need, Allah's help, and that will be Nasrullah. So, Nazafila is always, always Majroor. We can say, we can bring an indefinite Nazafila now, so let's uh, say, it calls milk. Echo, not a definite cow, special cow. Echo is milk. So we can translate that as Labanu. That's our vocabulary as well. Labanu Bakarin. So here Bakarin is indefinite. This is Murafila, which is uh, Mujrur. So here is a Labanu, although it's not Labanun, because Muzaf is not going to take the mean. Labanu is indefinite here because it is Muzaf towards indefinite nouns. So Labanu Bakarin, a cause milk. We can say meat of a goat, the meat of a goat, or meat of a goat, of a goat. Indefinite again. Meat of a goat. We can translate that as Lahmu Shatin. Lahmu meat. Shatin a goat. Goat. So indefinite. So here Laham is indefinite. Laban is indefinite because Mudaf Ila is indefinite in these examples. Uh, we will we can translate the desire of knowledge L E correct spellings. Okay. Uh, the desire of knowledge that will be talabul ilami. Talabul ilami. Il -me. The desire or seeking of knowledge, talabul elami. So these are few examples of um, murakkab azafi, mudaf, muzafila. So muzaf never takes the mean and never takes lam of definiteness, and muzafila is always in state of in state of char. So muzafila is always majroor. So our majroorat are only two. We have many nouns which will be Murfu or Mansubat are quite a, a long list. But the Majroorat, Majroorat are only two. Majroorat. Uh, the noun which follows Harfja, that's number one. Following Harfja, that ism will be Majroor. And Mudafila will always be Majroor. So only two nouns which will be in state of jar in any kind of writing or a sentence or an ayah.
مضافله let's analyze bismillah let me write down here بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. and when we stop here, we just say رحيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. so how do we analyze that? so I'm sure you have already picked up. we have got a ba which is harf jar here. ba. and that's our harf jar. jar. and ism ism is normally written like ismun. Ismun. Here we want to say Allah's name. So Allah's name will be Murakkab Idafi. Allah's name. So we have our vocabulary which is Ism and Allah. So Ism will be Muraf Is. Or Allahi, Lafz Jalala will be Mudafila here. Ismullahi, Allah's name. Now, if we add Harfi Jal here, so what's going to happen? Harfi Jal is going to, and we, if you remember, um, the Hamza of Ism we said um, is uh, Hamza al Wasl, if you remember that. Um, uh, Hamza of Imra'atun was Hamza al Wasal, Ism was Hamza al Wasal as well. And uh, Hamza of uh, Al of definiteness, that is also Hamza al Wasal. So, which means when it is combined with something before it, it remains in the writing but not pronounced. So, if we bring Ba before this, so we can add Ba here and this is going to go, it's, it's not going to be pronounced, so it will become Bis. It should be Bismillahi, but it's going to be Bis because it's Hamzat al Wasl. It will be Bis. It can't be Normullahi. This is Harf Jar, and this Ism has to be Majroor. So here is an example that Muzaf can take any of the Arab. It could be Marfu, it could be Mansub, it could be Majroor. And here it's going to be Majroor. Bismillahi. Okay. So here we see um, ism is in jar because of harf majroor, ism majroor, and at the same time it is mudaf, mudaf, and lafz jalala is in jar because it's mudafila. 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 Um, so Mudaf Ism is in Jar because of Harf Jar is in Jar because of Harf Jar, which is Ba. And uh, this is Mudaf here. And because when we have Mudaf, we are going to have Mudafila. So Lafiz Jalala is Majroor because of being in the position of Mudafila. So Ism and Allah are both majroor here, one because of being mudafila and other because of the effect of this harf jar. So our um, analysis will be that will be harf jar, and this is mudaf and mudaf is a combine to make ism majroor. Ism majroor. And Jar and Majroor will combine to make Murakkab Jari. So in this Murakkab Jari, we have Murakkab Idafi as well in it. So end of the day, it is Murakkab Jari, but in it there is Murakkab Idafi. And the whole of Murakkab Idafi has gone in, into Jar to become Isam Majroor. 
So where does this alif goes? This is specific to Bismillah. At other places where um, ism is used, even in Quran, um, alif is remained in writing, although not pronounced. But in Bismillah, it drops in writing as well. And usually it is written like this, a little bit longer. Like that. Bismillah. So alif is dropped in writing as well and that is specific to bismillah not to um, to the to an ism at an other place when it is used even in quran so bismillah so we've got haraf jar we have ism mujroor and we have mudaf and mudafila and then the whole construction is murakkab jari so what about rahman and rahim why are they in state of jar here Rahman is in state of Jar, Rahim is in state of Jar as well. They are in state of Jar because they both belong to Allah in a way that uh, they both become Sifa of Allah. So this is Sifa number one. Sifa one. And this is Sifa two. Sifa two. So both these Sifat um, their mausuf is Allah. Because mausuf is in Jar, Sifa number one is in Jar, Sifa number two is in Jar as well. And uh, mausuf with its two Sifas um, becomes in this construction. Muzafila. Muzafila. And this is Muzafila and Ism is Muzaf. Muzaf and Muzafila become Murakkab Azafi. Murakkab Azafi. And this Murakkab uh, Azafi here is we have got Harf Jar here and this Murakkab Azafi is Ism Majroor and Jar and Majroor combine to form Murakkab Jari. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim is and um, is a phrase, it's not a sentence. So what we are saying is, um, Ba means with, ism name, ism of Allah, so with the name of Allah, and actually in English if we translate this whole thing as a Sifa Masu, so that translation will really be that with the Rahman and Rahim Allah's name or another way of saying in English will be from the translation point of view with the name of Allah who is Rahman and Rahim but they remain Sifa in whatever way we translate that they remain Allah's Sifa so um, this is an this is not a sentence, uh, it is a phrase. So whole of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is phrase. Uh, it's not a sentence. But usually it is translated as a sentence because uh, translations will be I begin with the name of Allah who is uh, compassionate um, and merciful. These kind of translations. So I begin, so where that I begin has come from? Quite often um, in some translations they will write in brackets, I begin. I begin with the name of. With the name of Allah. Who is compassionate and merciful? So with the name of Allah. Who is that's just the translation. Who is compassionate and 
compassionate and merciful whichever way you want to say it merciful merciful and compassionate or compassionate and merciful one day we will go into Rahman and Rahim because their Marda is Raha mean Raha mean so there's a there's a difference there um, with a similar meaning so compassionate merciful or merciful and compassionate so this is a um, not a sentence it is a phrase so whatever work we do we say I'm going to eat so that I say here I'm I'm gonna eat with the name of Allah I'm going to write with the name of Allah I'm going to ride with the name of Allah so I'm going on a journey with the name of Allah so that I'm going to do this and this and this and this that is omitted here because it's a very frequent use anyway or uh, one can say some people say there is a um, fail which is mahzoof here which is which means dropped mahzoof mahzoof which means dropped so fail like ashra'u I begin ashra'u ashra'u bismillahir rahmanir rahim or uh, rather than saying Ashra oh, I begin or oh, we can say Arkabu I write so Arkabu Bismillah Rahman Rahim so whatever we want to say others um, say oh there is a kind of um, a noun missing here noun is dropped um, so they say Ibtada the beginning from Muptada Ibtada I Ibtada Tadai Bismillah Rahman Rahim. My beginning with the name of Allah, who is Rahman and Rahim. So that is our analysis of um, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, which uh, you will remember that this is um, a phrase, and end of the analysis will be this is Marakab Jari. Uh, in which we have uh, Murakkab Tasifi as well as Murakkab Idafi and, and this Murakkab Jari has Murakkab Idafi and Murakkab Tasifi in it. Subhanakallah mawa bihamdeka ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka.